Welcome back to Fire to Fork, or in this case, Fire to Pork. Now, today we are gonna do a no roast, roast pork. I'm gonna level with you. I've never tried this. I was dubious when I saw it, but I'm really keen to give it a go because if this works, it's gonna be killer. It is so much easier than other ways of doing pork belly. Um, and I think it's just got a lot of potential to be really, really, really tasty. Don't forget, somewhere in this video, there is a code word. Comment that code word down below on YouTube to win a copy of my book. I'll draw one every episode. Cheers. So, let's get into it. Start with, we need pork belly. I left mine uncovered in the fridge overnight. I like to leave the bottom covered with some the, pl the plastic bag it came in. And then you leave the skin to get a bit hard. So that's quite, quite stiff. Now we want to season it. So to season it, we'll get my knife. The big boy. You want a really sharp knife like this. And you want to score it, but you don't want to go through the skin. Now, we want about half a teaspoon to a teaspoon of sugar. A lot of this is gonna come off, so you can be pretty generous here. Then you want about the same of the Chinese five spice powder. You can overdo this, so be a little bit careful. I like to do a little bit of um, white pepper. Now, I know I've, I've ranted about um, always using freshly cracked black pepper. That is the case in all sort of European cooking, but in Asian cooking, you want this finely ground white pepper. How the hell do you open it? There it is. So a little bit of that on there. I would love some MSG, but I bloody forgot it. I'm so annoyed. Usually I'd put some MSG on this. Um, bit of salt. Then you wanna rub all that in. Now you don't have to leave it out overnight in the fridge like I did, but you know, if you can, it's good. Now we're gonna boil this. So I've got some water on the go over here. I'll just bring it over. Okay, in here we're gonna put a few peppercorns, probably like a teaspoon of peppercorns. Go a few bay leaves in there, three, four. And then we want some Chinese cooking wine. Put a couple of tablespoons of that in there. Then I'm gonna drop this guy in. So it's submerged and boil it for 10 minutes. All right, while that's going, I'm just gonna check the time. Okay, um, I want to make a quick sauce. So, do it in this. I'm making this up on the fly, so you can kind of see the process. I want a little bit of, I want it to be salty, a little bit sweet, a little bit tangy. Something to cut through the fattiness of pork belly. So, let's get a little bit of sugar. I like these individual sachets, because they're just, it's pre-measured. If you do break your box of sugar, it's not the end of the world. You know, you only lose, like if they fall out enclosed, and they're paper, so they're fine. Just chuck them in the fire or whatever when you're done. And then I'm gonna go three parts soy sauce. Seeing as we're already using Chinese cooking wine. I'll go one part Chinese cooking wine. And then I want some vinegar. So I'm gonna use a rice wine vinegar. And I reckon I go three parts of that. The vinegar is really important. Stir in that sugar. Mm, that's not bad. Could do with a little bit of, a little bit of ginger. So kind of crushed ginger. You could you could grate that, but this saves me. I'm um, dirtying my grater. Oh, that's really good. Touch more sugar. So I go one and a half teaspoons of sugar. Bloody spectacular. Okay, now this bloody thing I've been meaning to do for ages. This kitchen has a third leg under under here. And I bloody, I broke it. I broke the um, little handle, the little knob on it. So I've ordered a fresh one from Cub. Um, it's really good. They've got a like an online store where you can just get all the spare parts. It makes your life really easy. See, I've bent this, and it means I haven't been able to add the third leg, the stabilizing leg to this kitchen. So this was like eight bucks. It cost nothing. All right, that's not a right now job. That's a grinder job for home. But anyway, got the new one. Put it in here. I'm gonna put, put this in here so I remember it. All right, I think our pork's ready. It smells amazing. It smells like really good Chinese pork. Now, what you want is a fork and you wanna stab holes in it. By um, boiling it, this becomes soft. Now you can get one of those cool nail things that you get online that stabs heaps of holes really quickly. And the more holes, 
the more crispy. Now, <clears throat> we want to dry this skin. It's so fatty and delicious. And we're going to paint on a little bit of um, vinegar. I'm just going to use this rice wine vinegar because it's next to me. About a tablespoon, just so you get a, an even coating. And then, use a little bit of baking soda. To um, a teaspoon of baking soda kind of thing. Cool. And that is ready for the pan. In the pan, I'm just going to put down some neutral oil. This is a rice bran oil. You can use peanut oil or just some sort of a neutral cooking oil. And we'll go down to the fire. So we're going to put this on a pretty low heat. My main bit of heat is right here. So we're going to push it over here. This is how you do heat adjustment, by the way. You just move your thing side to side. I'm going to start with the meat side down, skin side up. We'll give that about probably 10 minutes on that side, just to cook it through. That's looking pretty good. You can even do it with less heat. And I'm just making some rice here as well. I'm just rinsing that. I'll put it on, probably put it on when I flip it. Okay, <clears throat> it's been about 10 minutes. So, yep, looks good. Now we're gonna try and crisp this skin. Now we want this on the lowest heat possible. So, rearrange your coals a bit. Push everything back. This can go for about 20 minutes. Make sure it's got good contact. The skin's got good contact on, on both oil and the pan. And just leave it. All right, let's quickly chuck this rice on. Go on a bit more heat. All righty, let's have a quick look at this. After about six or seven minutes, look at that. That is crisping up. That. Starting to crackle. Ooh. Ooh, we should be onto a winner here. You definitely want to check this every five or six minutes and turn it and make sure it's all getting evenly cooked and stuff. Alrighty, let's have a quick look at this. Oh, it's looking so good. Look at that. Tiny bit more to go, but man, that is, that is working. That is really, really working. Always carry some small sticks when you're cooking for exactly this reason. I need a little bit, little bit more heat under my rice. Just throw in some some sticks that'll generate some flame and get that cranking. Look at that. Look, so I've just got these little bits here that aren't crispy just yet, and that's it. So once those are crispy, I'll take it off. And you just really want to avoid blackening on this. It has been 22 minutes, and that just looks incredible. There's one tiny bit that's not completely crackled, and that's all right. The rest of it is just perfect. I'm going to call that huge success, but we're going to taste it. So. Let's get this off the heat, and we'll go and taste it. Rice, Let's see how that's looking. I actually had sushi rice, so that's the only rice I had. So, let's fluff that up a little bit. Hmm, that's great. All right, let's have a look at this pork. <laughs> look at that, that is so, Oh. oh, I'm gonna do, do, do it this way. I can go through the bits of meat properly. Oh, listen to that. I actually can't wait. I can't wait. I can't even wait for B roll. I need to just try this. It worked! It's still got a bit of chew to it, which I really like but it's crispy and delicious. Probably you could have used a thinner bit of pork belly, so it's more like crisp to meat ratio, but this is still great. Bit of sauce, green stuff on top. Now, which you'll just be roll. Okay, let's try the whole, whole shooting match. That is just awesome. That is such a me meal. Goes really well with beer. All right, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to comment the code word down below. And also, if you get a, if you get a comment um, responding to your comment when, you, when you've entered the competition, if they ask you to respond to them by a telegram, it's a scam, ignore them. I'll, I'll only ever ask you to contact me by email at the proper fire to fork email contact at fire to fork.net all right <coughs> see you in the next one cheers